Hey folks, it's Cooley. Got another one of your emails about high-tech cars and modern driving. This one comes in from Charlie W. Minnetonka, Minnesota. Says, I read that the Porsche Taycan will come with a vegan interior. And Tesla seems to be going that way too. What's the point? I hadn't planned on eating my car. <laughs> That's a good thing. I'm very pleased to hear that. Uh, this whole idea of veganism and cars may seem like an odd fit because you typically think, well, veganism is a diet, right? People who don't eat any animal products at all, but it actually is broader than that, as you probably know. It's people who don't wear or eat or use any sort of animal exploitation products of any kind. And as a result, that can link to the car because it has one huge animal product in it, the leather interior. Some folks don't want animal parts mixed with their car parts, so they seek vegan alternatives. And one of the best places to find those is, no, not at Whole Foods, but at a Mercedes store. Now, Mercedes is arguably the king of synthetic leathers. And I know what you're thinking. That sounds like that crappy embossed vinyl on some cheap car you had back in the day. That's not the case here. This story starts shortly after the war when Mercedes got back into car production. They offered something called Kunstleder, or artificial leather. By 1952, that was called Texleder, and now it's called MB Tex, and it's been this since 1956. This is not some fly-by-night new trend for them. You've got a real nice texture, not some fake embossing. The material's thick. It's not thin and, and stretchy feeling. You see this one's got perforations and really nice honest pleating and stitching, not fake embossed stitches. In every way, this resembles leather, feels like leather, and it wears like iron. I know a lot of folks who've got older Mercedes with MB Tex. Stuff's in great shape. I'm willing to bet a number of you have got Mercedes cars with leather interiors. That is actually MB Tex. Cartelligent says 55% of the Mercedes they lease go out with an MB Tex interior. A whole slew of other cars are going this way as well. Tesla has been quietly dropping leather from just about any part of its cars. The Model 3 and the coming Model Y are already vegan only. The Polestar 2 will come standard with a vegan leather style upholstery and recycled wood, although leather will still be an option. By 2020, Range Rover Evoque, Velar, and the Jaguar I-Pace will all offer vegan interiors. And the entire Prius line comes with either Softex synthetic leather or a synthetic fabric upholstery. Even the Avalon comes with that synthetic Softex. And that brings us to the car you mentioned, Charlie, the Porsche Taycan, which indeed has something Porsche calls race Tex. That's their version of a vegan interior. And one of the first things they point out about it is that it creates 80% fewer CO2 emissions in its entire production and lifespan. And therein lies one of the keys to why car makers are going vegan on the inside. They are under huge pressure, especially in the European Union, to reduce the CO2 footprint of their products and more broadly of their business. And not all of that footprint comes from a tailpipe. Globally, more CO2 is released by animal agriculture than by cars, although that's flipped in the US because we have so many cars per capita. Leather, according to the UN Industrial Development Organization, creates a long and rather nasty chain of CO2 and chemical emissions and processes. Averting all that with a cleaner alternative in terms of production as well as recycling would seem to be an altruistic thing on the automaker's part were it not for another EU regulation. It gives car makers credit, not only for reducing over-the-road CO2 emissions, but also gives car makers credit for so-called eco-innovations that may reduce their overall CO2 footprint, but not necessarily in a way that can be measured in a road test. That's where the interiors come in. If CO2 is kind of the big bang that got car makers' attention on vegan interiors, there are three lesser bangs, if you will. One of them is, these materials tend to weigh less. It may not sound like a big deal, but that's a huge piece of material all around the interior. And car makers will take every ounce they can get, and I mean that literally. So a lighter material can actually make a difference in their vehicle's efficiency. These also tend to cost less, uh, because often they're made of recycled materials that have a lower cost base and a shorter time to produce and assemble the raw resources than animal agriculture. And, as I mentioned, these are often from recycled materials and can easily become recycled materials. All of these are good guys for both automakers and a certain class of consumers. 
Most of those attributes also apply to vegan cloth interiors, like the Volvo V60 textile options that recently won awards best interiors honor and did so in a smashing plaid. But know that with any vegan interior, the adhesives and often the steering wheel cover can be non-vegan. Now I've driven a lot of cars with these leather alternative interiors and I've liked, if not loved, every one of them. I'm a big fan of this trend and the more I look at vehicles and their technology, which I always do with you, it's kind of odd. The leather interior is the last really antique thing on a car today. So if you look at that matrix of consumer interest and benefits for the car maker, you realize that this one's probably got legs. Keep those emails coming. I'm here to answer your questions about high-tech cars and modern driving. It's Cooley at theroadshow.com.